Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing the Beatitudes, and this time, the fifth Beatitude. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. So it's important to understand precisely what mercy is. I've heard a number of attempts to define mercy in a general sense, but why settle for a general definition when a more specific one will do nicely? The Church teaches that there are 14 works of mercy, seven of which are called corporal works of mercy, and seven spiritual works of mercy. First, the corporal works. 1. To feed the hungry. 2. To give drink to the thirsty. 3. To clothe the naked. 4. To harbor the harborless. 5. To visit the sick. 6. To ransom the captive. 7. To bury the dead. And then the spiritual works. 1. To instruct the ignorant. 2. To counsel the doubtful. 3. To admonish sinners. 4. To bear wrongs patiently. 5. To forgive offenses willingly. 6 to comfort the afflicted. 7. To pray for the living and the dead. These works seem to be centered around Christian charity in action, taking actions to benefit someone else in some way, or to relieve pain by one's actions. I plan to get into each of these more thoroughly in later episodes, but for now, there are two other things to notice about these works. Firstly, the works of mercy prevent a person from refusing to come to the aid of those who are in need in certain ways. They encourage the person to approach each situation with a view to the physical and spiritual well-being of the other person, rather than being motivated by their own wishes and desires. To fail to do this makes a person unmerciful. Secondly, note the distinction made between the third, fourth, and fifth spiritual works of mercy. We are to admonish sinners, reminding them not to continue in their sin, but also bear wrongs and forgive offenses. How can these different things be reconciled? Simple. The fourth and fifth works of mercy refer to personal wrongs and offenses. When someone personally offends you or harms you in some way, you are to forgive them. But sins and crimes against your fellow man are not personal wrongs or offenses in this way, and aren't really yours to forgive. Also, note how the first, second, and third spiritual works are aimed at encouraging people in the spiritual life for the purpose of saving their souls. And the sixth corporal work implies that those who are in captivity must have some price paid for them, and we can see that the need for justice is strongly embedded within mercy. Most especially, look at how the third spiritual work treats sinners. When a person is a sinner, mercy towards them doesn't take the form of relief of suffering at all, at least not directly, but of admonishment, which essentially means to scold or reprimand. Mercy is not the same thing as leniency. In fact, they're opposed to each other. Like many things in the Christian life, real mercy is a narrow tightrope in the midst of a wide circus tent, and we've got to find the right balance. Too far off one side, and we become unmerciful. Too far off the other, and we lapse into the evil of being lenient and compromising justice. The trick is to keep the true well-being of others in mind, while also not forgetting their physical needs as well. According to this beatitude, if we can show Christian mercy to others, it will also be shown to us. Next time, what is purity of heart? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.